G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for episode 12 of the Path of Exiles Survival Guide. In the last episode, I believe we went and killed Piety in an epic battle and it was a ton of fun. Uh, I always enjoy that fight when you're trying to progress. It can be pretty difficult sometimes. Now, in that episode, you also saw that we were having some mana problems. I switched over to Lightning Arrow and uh, Lightning Arrow is very expensive when it's uh, nicely supported. So we were having some mana issues, but uh, that's not the only thing. Even if I was using any other skill, we'd probably be having some mana issues at this point. And that's because that just seems to be the case with any Blood Magic build. You know, when you're beelining for blood magic and you don't have any mana nodes and uh, it just kind of feels a bit ugh, you just really can't do anything. However, we're, as you can see we're very close to taking blood magic. We also want to take this uh, life leech node here as well to help support blood magic and we can do that right now. We don't even need to level up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be respecting these four nodes here and putting them into blood magic, some life nodes, and some life ne leech nodes. Now we did originally pick up these and these were fantastic for leveling. We didn't get stunned as much, we had some extra regen, we had some extra life, and we did some extra damage while leveling. So pretty nice stuff. And uh, don't be afraid to uh, make builds flexible to, you know, uh, to respect things around, move points around as you need them. Actually, I already have two refund points, but I'll go ahead and grab all four anyway that's available to us currently. So we are gonna come back through here and grab this damage damage node eventually, but we're actually going to reroute up this way, come through these excellent damage nodes here, and end up there. So we don't end up getting these stun recovery nodes, and the Heart of the Oak isn't that great if you don't hit it for the stun recovery. So since we'll get Unravering Stance, we won't need any of these, these will all be useless to us. So we save some points, we get, become a bit more point efficient, and still get a lot of extra damage nodes there a little bit later on, but that, that's something for late game. For now though, we're gonna rush for Blood Magic. So. You'll remember back, if you've been watching this entire series, that we left some side quests. We didn't do them just because they're respec quests and you don't really need to do them unless you want the respec points. So, now we're going to go through and do those super quickly. So the first one is the one off of the mud flats. So we go back to mud flats, and uh, since it's a level 4 zone, yep, it's going to be pretty nice and easy. What has happened to my blood mad life gain on hit gem? Oh, that's right, we moved it to frenzy in the piety fight. I was wondering what was going on there. I thought it was a little bit not unsupported. So, we're going to uh, run straight off to kind of the left, to the north, north uh, west, and we should reach the wall eventually. Yep, okay, and the creek leads through this cave here. When you get to the orange door, we're going to be going into the flooded, fetid pool. Flooded. <laughs> so in here, the quest is basically uh, Path of Exile's version of Diablo 2's Den of Evil. That means we need to kill every single mob in this area. So the best way to do this is to go either clockwise or counterclockwise, and uh, follow the water along and kind of just... Uh, scan from the water to the wall, making sure you don't miss any mobs. As you see, we one-shot everything in here, so it's super quick. All we need to do is make sure we go through and get all the mobs. In fact, it's probably not really worth us opening chests and things like that, because uh, anything we find here is going to be super low level. Although, occasionally, I don't know, I don't know how sometimes RNG works, but occasionally I get things like uh, nice currency items and stuff that <laughs> in these lower level zones, which are actually useful for me, but uh, Oh man, that, those mana issues. In fact, things like superior mana flasks, uh, superior life flasks, are actually still going to be useful for us. Because uh, we can still trade those towards the vendor recipe later to get uh, some glass blowers baubles. Maybe this lightning shrine will help us with uh, killing off. Although it seems to have its damage scaled to the zone, so it's not going to deal extra damage like we are. But you just want to uh, just scan up and down through here, and you'll eventually uh, find all of the mobs. And uh, you'll even find the zone boss pretty soon as well. Now I want to show you guys uh, a trick. Here's the, here's the zone boss here. Uh, generally, if you guys encounter this guy earlier, he's pretty t tough because he keeps ra uh, raising all of these rowers and all that sort of thing. You can use things like uh, Infernal Blow or Detonate Dead or Freeze Crits to uh, destroy the body so he stops rezzing. Otherwise, you want to just try and target him down. Poison Arrow is a great way to do that. But for now, it's really a non-issue. <laughs> So, a little bit of a trick, if you're trying to uh, find the rest of the mobs in here and you're not sure how many you're missing, you can simply type in remaining, and it'll say either more than 20, or 10 remaining, or 5 remaining. This quest actually does it as well, so you don't really need to do it for this, but it's actually pre it's pretty useful once you get into endgame maps as well. And when you want to uh, full clear those endgame maps to uh, help give you uh, extra map drops and things like that, get all of the value out of your maps. But uh, it's a handy little trick to know. As you can see on the side of the screen there, it says three monsters remaining. Hopefully, they'll be just down here before we reach the en entrance. I hate it when there's one remaining and uh, you're not quite there. Oh, one remaining. There we go. So once you get all those, you can simply take a, a town portal scroll back to town. 
and uh, talk to Tarkley and he'll give you a respec book for the extra refund points that we need. Now I'll take you guys through the other respec quest as well in case you need some extra respec points. But there you go, there's two, so we now have four. We now technically have enough. But I'm going to take the waypoint to the respec quest in Act 2 to clear that as well because I think that'll be useful to do. So we're going to take the Crossroads waypoint, which we should have grabbed before because we wanted to use that to uh, go and grab all of the different various side quests. And then we just want to run off to the right from this crossroads. And you can kill any mobs you want in here, but it's really a non-issue. <laughs> so from here we're going to go into the Felshrine Ruins. This uh, Felshrine Ruins, as a side note, is an excellent farming zone. When we get into uh, mostly Merciless is the time you farm it, you don't really farm it in Cruel. And uh, in Normal you don't really need to do too much farming at all except for in Act 3. So most of the time you just skip over it, but it is a nice, safe easy farm zone later. As you can see we're encountering things like skeletons and zombies. They're all slow moving and only deal fizz damage so you can kill them like super quickly and get tons of XP, well a decent amount of XP very safely. When you're poorly geared, you know, when you have no resists you can do this zone in <laughs> Merciless and uh, I know I've played some pretty, uh, pretty dodgy characters that had pretty bad gear and uh, spent quite a few levels in here and eventually was able to gear myself up to move into Act 3 Merciless. So this is a place you can farm for that. But for now, we just want to follow the road along, as you see. We're uh, just ignoring everything, following the road along, and we're eventually going to uh, get to the... Uh, there's, there's a bit of a church entrance over here somewhere. And as you can see, we'll come through a gateway here, and there'll be kind of this ruined church section here. And uh, from there, we're just going to head straight through, following the path along, and there'll be a doorway up here. Once we find the doorway, we'll go down to the Crypt Level 1. There's actually a few levels of this, so we have to navigate through. There's a waypoint through here you can grab, although it's not really necessary because we don't plan on coming back here. But uh, later on, you'll grab that waypoint and use that door there to refresh the Fell Shrine uh, Ruins instance when you are farming Fell Shrine Ruins. So through here, you just want to move through. Just follow, pick a wall and follow it, so I'm going to pick the left wall and follow it. And you should have eventually reach the uh, entrance to uh, Level 2. And uh, if you're arach arachnophobic, this is going to be another nasty zone for you. Let's grab some fun shrines. Ooh, a diamond shrine. This should be fun to, uh, lightning crit, lightning arrow crit everything. Oh, explosions! <laughs> lightning arrow is really fun when you have a, uh, crit shrine. What, what's this one? A burning shrine. Oh, mayhem! <laughs> Destruction and mayhem. Awesome. Crits, and I wonder if our firestorms are critting as well. Yeah, they are, they are. Awesome. Oh, no, it seems like they have a fire trap effect, actually. I didn't realize that before. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> anyway, good fun, good fun. Okay, so we've found the Crypt Level 2 just by following the left wall. Always a successful strategy if there's no other trick to be used in a zone. Just follow one of those walls. It's also the way, uh, the method I use to clear maps as well, to be thorough. You stick to one wall, take all left turns or something like that until you've cleared that entire uh, area and then you like duck in and clear out any rooms and things like that you missed in the middle. There's a few other tricks like that, but that's the, that's the big one, I think. And it helps a lot for navigating a lot of these zones. Okay, so eventually you'll reach this bridge-like section here with some ruins and things like that. And uh, there'll be a bunch of monsters, blue monsters, and the zone boss at the end. Now, this guy is Archbishop Joffrey, and you'll know him if you've ever used the uh, unique two-handed mace, uh, Joffrey's Baptism. Pretty sick mace, and uh, this guy's also pretty nasty if you encounter him at, uh, <laughs> at a zone-appropriate level. He casts, uh, casts vulnerability, casts temporal chains, and uh, you can't curse him or anything like that. But, uh, oh, there's another Quicksilver. Oh, we don't need a Quicksilver. Now, after we kill him, you want to make sure you remember this part. You actually want to go back here and uh, click on this alt altar here and take the Golden Hand, which we're going to take back to Yina in town. So once we actually pick that up, because if you just kill him and leave, <laughs> you're not going to get the quest finished. Uh, we'll grab that. We'll head, in, head back into town, kill some things on the load screen. Oh, yeah. And then we can go talk to Yina, and she'll give us our respect book for this act. So, we've, you'll notice we've already done the one in Act 3. That's the uh, three busts and the sewers in Act 3. And the reason we did that when it was available rather than leaving it for later is because it actually gives you a skill point that you can spend as well, not just respect points. So, it's worthwhile doing straight away or delaying for a little bit then doing it later because the sewer zones are actually a little bit difficult in some of the later difficulties. But uh, for now, we have our respect points. And that means once we uh, clear out our inventory, we can go Blood Magic which is pretty exciting. Very exciting, actually. I uh, do love that feeling when you finally are able to go Blood Magic. So let's just clear out our inventory here, throw all this stuff over, and uh, here's my vendor tab. <laughs> I've only got a few flowers, so I need to start collecting up some more of those guys. I might have been missing some. But uh, here we go. So, refund passives. Now you can uh, 
control click these guys as well? No. Apparently, oh yeah, if you control click, it uh, skips the uh, apply refund, but you still have to click the refund button there. Okay, so there's those four points. And the points we're going to spend them in are getting Blood Magic, obviously. We don't need the Mortal Conviction because we're not really planning on running any uh, auras on this build. And uh, as you can see, our mana is now gone. So next point is to spend on Blood, Mag uh, blood Drinker, which because we're a high physical damage based build. And at the moment, we have a decent amount of physical damage. Uh, we could be a lot better. We've got 11 to 29. It's not huge. But we also use Life Gain on hit, so that'll help out. Uh, blood Drinker actually works a lot better with the uh, either Ice Shot variant or the uh, Split arrow variant of this build uh, but it's still okay in lightning arrow we're going to be taking advantage of some physical scaling so 50% of our damage at least will still be physical so we'll take blood drinker and then the best thing to spend our next for our next point on is this 12% node these two nodes here are fantastic we don't need any of this like bloodless action or anything like that but uh, these two 12% are super point efficient it's just two points for 24% life is massive so that it not only increases our life, but our actual life regen. Now, there's a bit of math you can do to know whether you're ready to take blood magic. Usually, I will go ahead and say that if you're like above level 20 or something like that, you're probably fine to take blood magic. In fact, people play blood magic races from level 1 and do okay. You just kind of rely on your flask a little bit more. But if you want to make sure you can sustain blood magic as safely as possible, then what you want to do is you want to look at your uh, life regen. So we should be able to find this. It should be in our defense panel here. Do we not have any life regen on our character at the moment? We might not actually have any. Okay, so yeah, we haven't picked up Golem's Blood and we don't have any on our gear. So we actually have zero life regen on this character at the moment. But that's something we can correct soon. I'll probably head down to Golem's Blood now uh, and then maybe up to Resolute Technique because the, the regen helps out a bit. Uh, the, so you want to add your regen, if you have any, to uh, any sort of uh, life gain you have. So we have 2% life leech. You can math that out based on your... Uh, physical damage you do so we can just I'm very bad at math but we can take an approximate here 11 to 29 so if we average that out we'll say maybe 20 damage 2% life leech on that we're doing like you know one or two points of life healing from that not not a big deal at this point in the game until we get some more uh, mana so that's only a tiny a tiny bit but we have life gain on hit is 14 per mob hit now with lightning arrow we hit at least three but we usually hit much more than that so we're always going to be getting more life back then the mana cost of lightning arrow so lightning arrow is always going to be at a positive now frenzy on the other hand is uh 15 mana cost and uh does a fair bit of extra physical damage 42 to 109 so the leech might carry that we might get uh i guess yeah still only like one or two points left we're not going to get too much life frenzy is going to be a little bit hard to support for a while so we kind of need to watch our health when we're using that but we can actually go ahead and just test this of course and we're going to go to the barracks because we're actually going to go do this side quest next to uh give our blood magic a whirl but we can stand here and just kind of attack air and see how how quickly frenzy eats our life it's not too bad it's really not that bad and uh Lightning arrow is a bit a bit worse, but when we're hitting mobs, it's going to heal up nicely. So we can oh, there's no actual mobs spawned here because it's too close to the shrine. So to find the side quest, which we'll we'll do some testing while we're on our way, we actually want to follow this uh, green wall along until we find an exit here. So we will heal a little bit from frenzy as well, but mostly we'll heal from lightning arrow. So you can just throw a lightning arrow into a group every now and then, and uh, you'll get healed up. Except for when you're missing like that, man. I'm, missing all those attacks so if you do lose a bit of your life you can uh simply use your life flask for now it's going to be not perfect yet until we get a little bit higher damage and things are until we get some regen and stuff like that but uh it's certainly a lot better than the mana problems it's much easier to keep your life up in fact i actually forgot something we're still running some mana flasks they're not going to be very helpful anymore so we want to go back to town i don't know if we're going to have any uh, enough scrolls to buy any life flasks there's some there we can sell uh, we can sell some armorous scraps. We've got plenty of those guys. So we'll sell five armorous scraps. That should get us the um, scrolls we need to be able to purchase some life flasks. And later we can upgrade our life flasks as well. Uh, oh, uh, only half a level off the next level of life flask. So for now I'm just going to buy one greater life flask here. And we'll put that in there. And uh, we don't need any mana flasks anymore. So I can just like take this off. I guess I have another Quicksilver. I, I, I think I have another Quicksilver somewhere. Let's run the Quicksilver. There we go. We're getting some use out of that. Later, you can, later we'll run things like Granites as well. So uh, we'll have like maybe three Life Flasks and a Quicksilver and a Granite will probably be the best setup for us. But for now, we just get a bit of extra run speed. So let's zoom along. We want to follow this green wall until we find a uh, doorway that leads into it, essentially. 
And you'll see, like, once we hit a big pack like this, we just we just heal up to full instantly. Life gain on hits really nice, especially, especially once we start to level it up a bit more. And now we never have to worry about mana ever again, until maybe if at endgame we decide to uh, respec the character to a mana build. Which is something you can do right at very endgame, like I'm talking when you're in the level, in the 80s and that sort of thing. Like what I did with my Infernal Below uh, Heavy Metal Marauder. He eventually respec over to mana, but I don't think it'll be necessary on this build. I think it is, this is, you know, a, sh a solid beginner's build that's really point efficient and, uh, you know, frees up the spots we spend, we would spend trying to run mana just on doing cool stuff like supporting our skills better and getting some cool extra passives. So that's the plan with this guy, but you can always, you know, modify the build to your liking uh, once you've learned the game a little bit more. So you notice there we took like 200 points of damage, one lightning arrow volley, clears it up, heals us all the way back up. And uh, I'm actually stuck against a cart. Oh, man. I'm going to need to uh, roll some Seething or Bubbling Flask pretty soon, actually. So we'll do that at next level once we actually upgrade our Flask to the next level of Flask. Because that's going to help with, like, if we take a bit of life damage, we can instantly heal our life then. Compared to, at the moment, we just have the, sly, the slow heal over time. Okay, now we have the entrance into the Imperial Gardens. I'm going to go in there. I don't, I don't really care about fighting these guys. <laughs> Especially since they've got us uh, pushed up against a wall there. And in the Imperial Gardens, we are we're going to be looking for the Hedge Maze. As you can see, we want to get the Chitos Plum from the tree in the Hedge Maze. Now, the Hedge Maze, is, Hedge Maze is actually in this zone. I believe there's also a waypoint in this zone, so we definitely want to try and get that as well. Next to the Imperial Gardens. So we're in the Imperial Gardens now. We want to try and find the uh, Hedge Maze exit. There's a locked door and there's an entrance to like a library in uh, up ahead as well, so we won't we won't be going there just yet. We want to do this quest first because it's going to give us an item. So you've got your same same statues and things like that we've dealt with, but there's actually a few other mobs in this one, some uh, potentially scarier ones actually. So uh, we'll we'll see if we can encounter those and have a look, bit of a look. Okay, first of all, we've got these porcupine mobs here. When these guys die, they release a volley of spines from their back and. Uh, You'll see that actually does quite a bit of damage. So one by killed one by one, not a big deal. Like these guys don't don't do too much damage. But uh, if there's a big pack of them and you kill them with like a lightning arrow and AOE ability of some description, and they all die at once, you can take a lot of damage really quickly. So you want to be careful of that. And if it's like an extra damage rare one or something like that, it's going to deal more damage as well. So you want to watch out for that. Looks like there's a damage aura up ahead, so I need to be a little bit cautious of that as well. So I'm just going to try and search for the uh, hedge maze. I'm just going to follow the left because I'm actually not 100% sure of any tricks to find the hedge maze in this zone. Alright, so we've come up some stairs and found the waypoint now. So we should uh, be able to try and find the hedge maze from here. Just make sure you grab the waypoint. As always, want to touch those waypoints. Alright, we've actually encountered the next mob behind this uh, uh, quill thing. What are they? I have quill fiends. I think of them as quill fiends because they're like those ones from Diablo 2. But um, <laughs> these guys here, the uh, the gulls or the avian wretches, they go by a few different names. But they're kind of like Zoidberg things that are, have feathers. They're kind of weird. <laughs> but when they see a dead body... You'll see them just like whoop, 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 run after the dead body, eat it, and then spit it back at you. So actually, let's kill one off so you guys can see that in action. It actually does a fair bit of damage. So they'll just like oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> consume that corpse, and then uh, you'll see that they spit it at you. Now, that actually does a lot of physical damage. So you want to try and kill these guys off while they're eating the bodies. You can kill one of them and use that as a distraction to kill the rest. Uh, and you want to try and avoid those uh, dead body consumed projectile things as much as possible. Because uh, as you can see, it does quite a bit of damage. So, ooh, Greater Mana Fast is not helpful. But what about these boots? Ooh, Rarity, no move speed. Ours are still better because of the move speed. I would like to find a new pair of boots pretty soon, though. All right, so there's the entrance to the library. We're going to uh, not head this way now, so we know we've gone the wrong direction now. Now, something interesting I want to talk about Blood Magic. When you first go Blood Magic, it can kind of, feel, kind of feel weird. You know, you're taking damage from doing your attack. So your inclination when you're taking a lot of damage is to run and not attack. However... You know, with a setup like this, where we've got life gain on hit and later life leech, uh, you're pretty much always going to be tankier when you're attacking. And this is the case for most builds that run some form of leech, but especially for blood magic builds, you know, you're always gaining life as long as you're attacking mobs. So if you're in danger, the best thing for you to do is actually just to attack. Sometimes it's going to be there to stand there and attack, other times it's going to be to kite and attack. Make sure you're always fire firing off volleys to get yourself healed up. As you can see, even only shooting two, uh, two guys there, two uh, statues, we're still taking positive life rather than taking damage. So as long as you're hitting something, you're going to uh, be healing up and you're going to be much tankier. So try and fight that impulse to not attack when you're in danger. Oh, we've encountered our first devourer. So these guys hide, and they hide underground, and when you walk over them, they'll uh, pop up and ambush you. 
They're uh, pretty terrifying. They hit super hard as well. Their ranged attack deals fire damage, and uh, if we can get hit by it, as you can see, it hurts quite bad. But they also hit you when they pop up as well. And uh, a single one like this isn't too bad, but when a pack pops up and you're like surrounded by them, or if it's a rare one and it does extra damage, uh, they can be pretty terrifying. There's actually a map boss that's one of those guys, and he is so terrifying. <laughs> He's like, most people just do not fight him at all, but... Uh, Pretty, pretty scary stuff, and they're just a scary mob. Well done to GGG for the design on those guys, because they are super terrifying. But uh, just continuing still to look for the hedge maze. Okay, we've found the entrance to the hedge maze now, so we're going to head on into here. It's kind of, the layout of this zone is kind of funny, because when you look at it on the map, you actually can't, like, it's not a separate zone. It's not a branch. It's not a next zone. The hedge maze is, like, inside this zone, so it's kind of like a dungeon, I guess. But uh, it doesn't look like a dungeon, so that kind of confuses people a bit. Like, they often look for the other doorways and have a bit of trouble finding the hedge maze. But here we are. We've found it, so we're just going to navigate our way through. As with any maze and as with any zone, we're just going to pick a wall and stick to it, because that's the way through get, uh, to get through a hedge maze. If you stick to one wall, you'll eventually find your way out the other side. So, uh, especially true when you're in a hedge maze. Oh, there's a shrine up there. That's a, if that's a crit shine, that, oh no, it looks like it's uh, one of the uh, behemoth shrines, the one that makes everything much larger. <laughs> so I'll see if I can fight my way in there and get that for myself. Oh, there's like a blue pack of uh, the quilt, oh, what are they called again? Porcupines, okay, that's the one. That makes more sense. So we are an appropriate level, I think, to start finding Granite Flask. However, because we're mostly doing this cell found, it might be a while before we actually find one. But if you do find a Granite Flask, do not be afraid to use it. Or a Jade Flask, in fact. Both of them work equally well for this build, since we are Iron Reflexes. In fact, we could even use both and stack them to uh, have extra uh, armor from the, bo the effect of stacking both of them. Uh... So they're pretty good. You want to, when you're rolling them, when you're crafting them, you want to roll uh, increased evasion on the jade flask and uh, increased armor on the uh, granite flask because that's going to just uh, amplify the effect of it. Ooh, life gun on here is leveled up. It's going to help keep us alive. And now we're massive. Ha ha ha. <laughs> good fun. Man, trying to work our way through this hedge maze uh, is a bit tricky with all these mobs in here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if our real life hedge mazes had all these guys in it, that would be a little bit more scarier. But uh, Lightning Arrow doesn't work so well in really confined spaces like this because you kind of need the space to let it uh, spread out, especially with Pierce. So with Chain, it might be work a little bit better, but uh, it's a little bit little bit tricky to work. At least you can kind of uh, hit hit them off of the walls from that AOE procking on the walls. Okay, we've uh, found the plum or the zone where the plum is. Oh man, Devourer attacks! <laughs> You'll eventually make it. I'm pretty sure it's just the opposite corner from the entrance or the opposite side from the entrance. So we eventually, we just, I just kind of followed one wall, worked my way through there, whichever way I could. Got, reached a few dead ends, but not a big deal, not a big deal. We're kind of doing some, a little bit of farming and leveling here anyway, which is going to be helpful, because uh, soon we're going to be face, facing the uh, Act 3 boss, the new Act 3 final boss, Dominus, and he is, that is a brutal fight. But as you can see, there's the plum. We'll kill off the rest of these blues, and then we'll grab the plum, because, uh, that fella's going to uh, convert over to an item for us from Fairgraves in the dock. Okie dokie. Here is the Chittus Plum. And uh, we'll head back to town now. We can just take the waypoint back to the docks. And our Fairgraves will be right here at the waypoint as well, which is nice. Nice and easy to just jump in and grab this item. Here he is. I'm pretty sure you get a ring, but uh, let's see. Oh, now you have a choice of amulets or flask. I'm actually just going to kill these guys off first. But uh, you'll notice I've cancelled the window. Window. If you ever do that and you're like worried that you've lost the quest reward, you can simply talk to them again and it says, Swig of Hope Reward. So, now, what's going to be most useful for us? I think uh, we won't need Dexterity as a ranger. We're going to have heaps. Strength and Intelligence is probably going to be the most useful. Strength will eventually help us out with Iron Grip, which we will be, we will be able to grab soon once we have enough strength to make it worth it. And uh, intelligence is going to help us out with supporting our skills, so we'll go ahead and grab that. This is uh, there's a very good chance that this is going to be better than our current current amulet because our current amulet only has a bit of damage on it. It's not very good. Oh, 16 to all attributes, crit strike chance, which will be useless once we get uh, resolute technique. But for now, it's okay. <laughs> Physical attack, leech does mana and three mana gain on kill. <sighs> it's not very good. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, man, it's pretty bad, actually. It's not really going to help us that much. In fact, we're going to, you know, we're going to lose damage by putting it on 69 down to 62. I'm pretty sure we want to keep using our current amulet. So, that's unfortunate. They can't always be winners. This has uh, been an episode of uh, pretty bad loot drops, unfortunately. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look at things. Level 33, moving into the Imperial Gardens. Uh, we're going to do... There's a side quest in here we can do. Uh, which I believe gives us a skill jam at this point in the game, and uh, then we're going to be able to head forwards and do Dominus. Now, the levels of those should be like 34, 35, I think. Uh, so, we're level 33. We could potentially push through at this. However, we're very close to a level, so I might just farm up one extra level in docks. Also, because we haven't had any sick loot drops in this uh, episode, and I want to try and get one for you guys. <laughs> I want to try and get at least one sick loot drop each episode, but... Uh, yeah, sometimes RNG is not very kind to us. We had a good chance with the amulet. Would have been not hard to beat our current amulet on a rare one, but uh, unfortunately that's not the case. So if you uh, you know, if you do a bit of docs now after getting blood magic, you're gonna find that it's a bit more cruisy than when you were trying to struggle with mana issues. You're gonna be clearing things much much faster now. So I'll do I'll do uh, farm up the rest of this level on docs and see if we get any drops. And there's our level that was pretty quick. Still pretty good experience in here. Level 32. We're level 34. It might be worth uh, farming to uh, until we start to reach uh, experience penalties, or maybe like 35 might be good. Won't be won't be very long to uh, get an extra level in docks, so I might farm up one additional level in here just to uh, make up the Dominus fight a bit more cruisy, and hopefully also to get a little bit of better gear. I wouldn't mind like a, a better uh, quiver would be really nice. Um, a better amulet would be nice. A little bit more life on our gear, maybe some something something a bit of extra damage or something like that. We'll see what we can get. So for this level, we could potentially grab the very efficient 12% life uh, node. However, our, our total life pool is actually doing really nicely, and I actually want a beeline for this uh, life regen node because it's going to take a lot of the pressure off of us attacking. So, you know, when we're not attacking like now, we can sort of slowly heal up while running from pack to pack. So I'm going to uh, grab these life nodes and head down towards Golem Blood. That also puts us in a good position to take Diamond Flesh, which Diamond Flesh actually isn't really needed at endgame. It's pretty easy to get resist on your gear at endgame. But uh, while leveling, uh, this helps you cap out your resistances in each difficulty. And uh, against the Dominus fight, this actually could be very helpful, because we do want to uh, cap out all of our resistances before heading into that. So uh, Diamond Flesh could be pretty handy, and taking Golem's Blood now puts us in a good position to get that. Now, I said I was going to farm an extra level, but there's actually something very useful that we could do right now. And I want to double check to see if we have the, uh, the currency required for it. So first things first, I'm going to sell this. There's no reason for me to keep this at this point. There's no vendor recipes really worth doing at this level. Uh, later on, though, we'll keep things like amulets and rings for the uh, Chaos or vendor recipe. But later, that's only at level 60 plus. So not an issue just yet. But uh, there's something very good we want to do now. Orb of Transmutation. Uh, we also want to get some more Scrolls of Wisdom. We've got plenty. We should be right. So what we want to do is try and get some uh, higher level flasks. So we've got level 34 life flasks available for us now. We've got two here, so we're going to go ahead and buy both of them. And we can potentially, if we have three grand life flasks, uh, which we can... This is kind of uh, this is kind of hacky, but let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to buy this flask, and then we'll vendor three of these guys for the giant life flask. People have been urging me to use this recipe, and I always forget. But look, I've finally done it. I've finally done it. So now we have... Three, three giant life flasks. Hey, and I got a I got an achievement for it. Thanks, guys. So now we want to roll each one of these guys. Now, what we get at this point is okay. We can kind of just go with any sort of magical mods going to going to be helpful. In fact, we got dispels burning and dispels frozen and chill. Those are both very handy to have, actually. We ideally want at least one bubbling or seething, though. So what I'm going to use is an augment here because this is only a giant life flask of dousing. It only has a suffix. We want to give it a prefix. And we got... Ooh, saturated. Okay, that's not bad. Saturated uh, increases the amount recovered over a longer period of time, so it's a nice one to have. Over, over, you're kind of your long heal. Uh, our cautious giant life flask is a increased recovery on low life, so if we're about to die, we can use that to uh, heal ourselves. So I'm going to put that in that slot. And uh, did I? Oh no, this is just an older flask. I don't need. Um, now we're out of transmutes. Oh no, we have some transmutes. Good stuff. Now, this is another giant life flask of heat. We want to get uh, bubbling or seething, which is a prefix. So we can try and roll the prefix here. A catalyzed is increased recovery speed. That's not bad, but I would really like one bubbling or seething. Panicked. Yeah, that's not too helpful because that's a low life heal. We already have one of those. Surgeons is not too helpful. Um, 
Bubbling, there we go. Bubbling life fast of fending. Fending is not helpful at all, because we're not melee. <laughs> but the bubbling is good enough to keep, and I don't want to spend a heap more currency trying to roll that. So, pretty awesome. We've got now an instant uh, heal here. 50% uh, reduced amount recovered. 135% uh, increased recovery speed. So you get 300 life over 3.4 seconds. But uh, half of that instead applies instantly. So we get like a 150 heal instantly from that. So pretty good stuff. We've got an instant heal. We've got a, a long slow heal with dispels burning. And we've got a heal on low life. Uh, with Dispels Frozen and Chilled, which should be very handy. The only thing we need is a Dispel Shock, but we don't have any of those at the moment. We could potentially craft one of our Quicksilver Flasks for now as well. Uh, move Speed Bonus on here would be nice. Uh, increased Stun Recovery is not too helpful. Extra Charges is okay. Let's see what we can run here. Dispels Frozen and Chilled. Charge Recovery. Charge Recovery is okay to keep that going a little bit longer. Ah, uh, we're out of Transmutes. That'll do for now. I can uh, craft my Quicksilvers better at Endgame, and we want to use Glass Blowers Baubles on Quicksilvers before we craft them at Endgame anyway. So, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That's uh, how you go about doing your, getting your respect points and uh, finishing off that quest. Hopefully you guys get a better emulator than I did because that was rubbish. <laughs> but uh, in the next uh, episode, we're going to go do a side quest and probably head on to uh, go and kill Dominus as well. So, uh, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.